Oh, let's open our Bibles. Greatest book ever written to the book of Ecclesiastes. And we are currently studying chapter number seven. That is, at least so far, and we've studied six chapters prior to this, uh, it is the wisdom chapter of Ecclesiastes. I counted, because I wanted to be sure, six times in chapter seven alone, the word wisdom is used. And uh, furthermore, the word wise, I made a note, six more times in chapter 7. Wisdom and being wise. Now, let me give you some perspective on that. In chapter 7, the word wisdom is six times. In the whole book of Ecclesiastes, and I was surprised at this class, 28 times. Uh, I'm, I'm prepared to say Ecclesiastes is a book of wisdom. We know it's Old Testament. We know it's in the poetic section, the books of poetry, uh, but uh, a book of wisdom. 28 times wisdom in Ecclesiastes. Listen to this. In the whole book of Acts, I can only find the word wisdom four times. In the book of Romans, no greater epistle has ever been written in world history than Romans. And uh, the word wisdom occurs one time. So Ecclesiastes certainly is a book of wisdom. Now, in our last lesson, we sort of got an overview of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, or maybe it was the lesson prior to our last lesson. Uh, but I will repeat this. In our current paragraph, verses 11 through 18, the paragraph we're studying now, wisdom helps us see things more clearly. Wisdom helps us discern life more clearly, the issues of life. Uh, of course, we're not going to get in verses 11 through 18 today. Just 11 through 14 will be our text. And now when I say wisdom, chakma, the Hebrew word wisdom, I want you to remember that the Bible talks about two different kinds of wisdom. How can I summarize it quickly? Wisdom that is from above and then wisdom that is earthly. I guess Solomon would say under the sun wisdom. Well, Preacher Bagel, what's the difference between God's wisdom and man's wisdom? Oh, my. We have a little paragraph in the New Testament book of James that will answer that question. I'm going to read you part of it. James 3, beginning at verse 14. If ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. Don't feel good about that and lie not against the truth. This kind of wisdom, bitterness, arguing, fighting, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, devilish, sensual of the flesh. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion, the wisdom of the world, and every evil work. We're defining wisdom by how the worldly wise man acts, how he behaves, what's in his heart. I continue to read. But the wisdom that's from above, tell me about it, preacher, is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, kind, gracious, approachable, full of mercy, full of good fruits, without bias, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Uh, God's wisdom and how it behaves, man's wisdom and how it misbehaves. So we're going to look in our four-verse text for, I'll call them, as I did last time, nuggets of wisdom, nuggets 
of wisdom. I like that word nuggets. Little tidbits. Little, in, in, in some instances, one-liners that teach me God's wisdom. Let me give you this definition of wisdom. We talked about it before. We spent weeks in the book of Proverbs earlier in our evening meditation series, and that's available. It's archived. You can uh, go back and study those if you will. Uh, Proverbs, here's a definition of wisdom as per the book of Proverbs, for that matter, as per any book in the Bible. I like the definition. It's very workable. Seeing life from God's point of view. Oh my, I've had an accident. My world's falling apart. And when I apply wisdom to that, are there really any accidents with the child of God? Could God have built something good into this that I can glean from it if I respond? Seeing life from God's point of view. Wisdom. You can go a little further, I think, and uh, apply the word understanding. Responding to life from God's point of view. Wisdom, seeing life from God's perspective. Understanding, then behaving, responding to life from God's perspective perspective. I had the opportunity of going to a Christian high school uh, years ago, of course. There was a godly preacher who lectured to us, who preached to us in chapel. We had chapel every day. And uh, I'm talking 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. That was my uh, age group, my years there. And uh, he had what they called chapel sayings. The chapel sayings of, he was the founder of that institution, godly man, wonderful evangelist and preacher. Uh, here I am, here I am in my uh, 70s now, late 70s now, and uh, I can remember those nuggets of wisdom. Listen to this. Boys and girls, young people, do right if the stars fall. What does that mean? Do right no matter what. Do right if the sun quits shining. Do right if the stars quit twinkling. Do right if the stars fall. Hmm. Listen to this one. The greatest ability is dependability. Wow. The greatest ability, you say, no, it's a good IQ. The greatest, no, the greatest ability is dependability. The Word of God will back up. That's the, moreover, it is required in servants and stewards that a man be found faithful. Mm -mm. Listen to this one. I, I don't know why I'm bringing these up this morning. We, we've got to get to our verses. Never sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Never sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Don't sell out your future for a few minutes of feeling good. Now, don't sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the immediate. My, my, listen to this one. It is never right to do wrong to get a chance to do right. Think it through. That's Bible. It is never right to do wrong to get a chance to do well, I'm uh, uh, my, I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to lie, but my ultimate goal is good. It is never right to do wrong, to get a chance to do right. And Solomon, in his writings, he excels in teaching us this kind of wisdom also, but by means of the Spirit's Holy Ghost inspiration. We better go to verse eleven. Wisdom is good. Uh, and, and the word good, T-O-B, Tob, wisdom is beneficial. Wisdom is a blessing. Wisdom is a prosperous route to take. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. With an inheritance. Something that has been bequeathed to you. Promised to you. Will to you. Um, an inheritance without wisdom will probably be squandered. You'll waste those thousands or whatever the amount may have been. But wisdom is good with an inheritance. Listen to this. For by it, there is profit to those that see the sun. 
Notice that's an unusual uh, turn of a uh, uh, phrase there in verse 11. If you've got wisdom, maybe an inheritance as well. If you've got wisdom, it's good. And there is profit. There is profit. And the word profit, we've had it before. Advantage. Success. There is profit uh, to them that see the sun. And by see the sun, they're not under the sun. I think it's a different emphasis here. To those that see the sun, it means, I believe it means that those who are alive, those who are breathing, those who can see uh, under the sun uh, and, and, and smell the fragrances and enjoy the taste of supper tonight. And uh, oh my, wisdom is good with an inheritance. Wow. Uh, I want to say this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. There's my, you, you, you'll use that inheritance wisely. You would tithe 10% of it to the Lord in his work. You would probably lay aside some of it for your children who are coming along so that they will be uh, uh, cared for. You, uh, wisdom with an inheritance is a good thing. But now I want to go one step further. See if anybody will agree. Wisdom without an inheritance is good. Wisdom is a blessing if you do not have money in the bank. Wisdom is a blessing, and I'm going to, I'm going to, oh boy. Uh, and I thought of this. What if Solomon is saying that wisdom is good with an inheritance in this sense? If you've got wisdom, you've got the inheritance. If you possess wisdom, you possess you possess the good things of God. Let me let me give you an example. Israel. The nation of Israel. Oh, let's pray for Israel. Psalm 122, 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God wants us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And then God tacks this promise on the end of Psalm 122, 6. They shall prosper that love thee. You pray for the peace of Jerusalem, God will bless you. You you love the Jew because the Jew gave us the Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, Joseph was a Jew. He's not Jesus' daddy, but he was the legal guardian. Mary the virgin was a Jew. That go. Pray for it. Israel has an inheritance. I'd like to know what that inheritance is. Many, many inheritances God gave Israel. But Romans 3, chapter Chapter 3, verse 2 gives me one. Because under them, Paul is writing, the Israelites, under them, the Jews, were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God. Preacher Bagel, I've wondered about that verse. What does it mean? God gave us an inheritance to Israel. His book. His Bible. That word, uh, oracles, it's logos in a different form. The word of God. Genesis through Deuteronomy, written by Moses, a Jew. Book of Psalms, largely written by David, a Jew. The epistles of the New Testament, Paul has 14 of them, written by Saul, of a Jew who got saved to the glory of God. So, uh, maybe the verse is saying wisdom is good and wisdom can be an inheritance and by them there is profit to them that are alive to them. We better thank God for Israel. We better thank God that through her came the oracles of God, the book of God, uh, the word of God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, now read verse 11 again. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. It might even be the inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. God's word brings me profit. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, listen up, and is profitable. And is profitable. Wisdom. And my, isn't the Bible God's book of wisdom? It will be, pro and that word profitable in 2 Timothy 2.3 means to rake up, to amass, 
to pot. You read your Bible, you'll be raking up blessings. You'll be wake, raking up nuggets of wisdom. You, you'll be uh, uh, raking up secrets to live successfully to the glory of God. Wow. Go to verse 12. That's a nugget of wisdom. God's word is profitable for us. Verse 12. For wisdom is a defense. Now, that word defense is spelled T-S-E-L, sale. And uh, 45 times, it's its predominant meaning, 45 times in the Old Testament, it is translated shadow. Wisdom is a defense. Listen to this, it's surprising. And money is a defense. Wow. The word there for money is the word for silver. The normal word for silver in the Old Testament, Hebrew word. Oh boy. Behind that word for silver, let me preach just a minute, is a root verb that means to crave, to long for. And there's the danger in money, silver, and gold. In its right place, it's a blessing. It, it, uh, when used by a godly man and kept uh, in the background with Jesus first, it is a wonderful, wonderful potential tool for serving God. But normally, those, I want more yearning, crave, I want more silver, I want more gold, I want more money. And that translates into the love of money, which Paul says is the root of all evil. But here, for here in our verse, wisdom, it's a shelter. It's a shadow. It's a defense. Money is also a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is of the two. Wisdom and money. Of the two. The excellency of the knowledge is. Now get ready. Here's a nugget of wisdom. Wisdom gives life to them that have it. The more wisdom you have, the more life you're going to have. That sort of sounds like abundant life. Uh, that sort of sounds like unending life. Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about verse number 12 here for a few minutes. Have you ever heard of a tax shelter? Oh, yeah, preacher, it's a way that I can uh, protect my money. I want to talk a minute about a wisdom shelter. Wisdom that can keep me from the temptations of the devil. Wisdom that can keep me going to church and learning uh, the word of an almighty God. Uh, wisdom with my money. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Thieves can break through and steal. Moth and rust can corrupt it. But with the wisdom of God, no moth, no rust, no thief. Listen to Proverbs 8, 11. I can't wait to share this with you. Proverbs 8, 11. Wisdom is better than rubies. Wow. And all the things you might desire cannot be compared to it, to wisdom. Listen to Proverbs 8.18, 8, later that same chapter. Wisdom is talking. Proverbs 8 is the wisdom chapter 1 of the key wisdom chapters of the Bible. Riches and honor are with me. Wisdom says if you have me, you'll have riches. That might not mean money in a savings account riches, but it can mean the riches of God. Amen. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches. They won't pass away. And righteousness. Wisdom. Wisdom is the thing you want in your life. Wisdom is a defense. Money can be a defense, a shelter. But the excellency of knowledge is this. Wisdom gives life unto them that have it. I'll talk a minute about wisdom as a protection. Let me use this word, this, this series of words. Wisdom as an umbrella of protection. Preacher, I don't get that. Psalm 121. But one of my favorite psalms in the Bible. Psalm 121 verse 5. I'll just read it. The Lord is thy keeper. The word keeper, he's your guard. He's watching over you. He'll protect you. The Lord is thy keeper. Get this. The Lord is thy shade. Same word. T-S-E-L. Sail. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. 
The sun will not smite you by day. You'll never have a sunstroke. Nor the moon by night. The Lord shall guard. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. If that's not God, if that's not wisdom, if that's not the Holy Spirit being my defense, my shelter, I don't know what is. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. It is so important in life. And, and that last line, wisdom giveth life. Wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Oh boy, I want to share some verses with you. Proverbs 9, verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's talk about that a minute. Wisdom will give you life, but you can't have wisdom without first having the fear of the Lord. May I read the verse again? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, listen to Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord, which brings wisdom. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. God just promised, if you have my wisdom, if you have reverence and fear for me, I can prolong your days. Someone said there, wisdom giveth life to them that have it, says that is, quote, life on the highest level. Life on the highest plane. Well, preacher, what in the world is that? That I've come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. More abundantly. And that keys on the little Greek word. Uh, it's peresos, peresos. It keys on the little word. It's a preposition, peri, P-E-R-I. Uh, peri, and, and what does it mean? All around. Life all around. Life in front of me. Life behind me. Life on my right hand. On my left hand. Life above me. Life below me. Abundant. Overflowing life. Get God's wisdom. Where do you get it? Out of the word of God. Where do you get it? Out of a close walk with God. Where do you get it? After, out of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Where do you get it? By, by uh, uh, obeying the precepts of scripture. Listen to this. Proverbs 8, 35. Wisdom's talking. Whoever finds me, whoso findeth me, findeth life. If you find me, you have found life. Wow. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Make this your daily goal. Proverbs 8, 34. Make this your daily goal. Wisdom says, Blessed is the man that heareth me. Blessed is the man that seeks me. Listen to this. King James Version. Watching daily at my gates. Watching daily at my... Well, here's, here's the book of wisdom. Let's open it up. There's the gate of wisdom. Watching daily at my... If I'll get in God's word, meditate therein day and night, study it, ponder it, uh, be obsessed with it, then practice it and obey. Oh my, watching daily at my gates, I'll bless that man. He'll be abundantly blessed waiting at the posts of my doors. Mm -mm -mm. Isaiah 50 verse 4, this is messianic. This, hold on. This is talking about our Savior. Jesus says, my Father wakes me every morning. Wow. When he was on earth. And he gives me the tongue of the learned. My Father wakes me up every morning. I go up on a mountainside somewhere and he teaches me. He tutors me. He gives me the tongue of the learned. That I might know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. That's Jesus acquiring wisdom every morning from his Father. You say, Jesus didn't acquire wisdom. He's God. Luke 2.52 And he increased in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. I'd like to say a lot more, but we must go to verse number 13. Preacher, I see you're recording here with a, an anchor on the wall. Yes, wisdom will anchor your life. 
Wisdom will give you truth on which you can tie your rope, on which you can, on which you can solidify the foundation of your spiritual life. That's why I've got the anchor up there. Do right if the stars fall. Uh, uh, the greatest ability is dependability. Seek wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. Verse 13, consider the work of God. Who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Oh, my goodness. Consider the work of God. I've got a plethora of scripture here on considering God's works. Uh, Psalm 66, 5, come and see the works of God. Of God. Psalm 78 7. Don't forget the works of God. First Chronicles 16 9. Talk of all God's wondrous works. And uh, um, all the way through the Bible, the works of an Almighty God. And, and so consider the work of God. And then verse 13 implies this. In fact, it teaches this God can make things straight. And God can make things crooked. And we're going to have to learn to cooperate with God's will. Let me tell you what this verse is saying. We'll never understand all God does. His ways are above our ways. So we're going to have to learn to, I like this, I wrote it down for us, live yielded to the will of God. We're going to have to learn to say, Lord, you've sent a crook. You send a crooked place in my life. I can't change it. I will obey uh, the promptings of your spirit. I will, I will be patient in this hard time. I will yield myself to your will. Thy will be done. Jesus said it. James said we ought to pray it. Thy will be done. Psalm one, let, let me give you this real quick. Psalm 146 verse 9 the way of the wicked, this is what God does. The way of the wicked, God turns it upside down. Upside down. And the Hebrew, God makes the way of the wicked crooked. Makes it crooked. The way of the transgressor is hard. I don't know about God and crookedness, preacher. Isaiah 40, 22, God sits on the circle of the earth. Now, uh, the, 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 or, uh, the planet, God sits on the circle of the earth. God can make things crooked. God can make things straight. One of the greatest sermons ever preached yesteryear, a Puritan named Thomas Boston, the crook in the lot. You're living your life as God has given you, the crook. God throws you a curve. Don't grumble. Don't complain. Obey God and uh, consider the work of God. You can't make it straight. If he's made it crooked, bow down, yield to him, obey him in every single way. Oh my, what a lesson. Submit to the will of God, to the plan of God. Good times are bad times. Mountaintops or valleys, thy will, Father, you know best. Verse number 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. That's easy to do. But, but, in the day of adversity, consider, consider. And what does consider? It's raw. Look at it. Ponder it. Learn from it. Glean from it. God has set one against the other. That's an interesting Hebrew verb. God has uh, just exposed them. God said good days and bad days. Good times and hard times. To the end, that man should find nothing after him. God sends us good times. God sends us bad times. Don't find fault with God. He knows God can teach me more sweet things in the bad times. God can show me in the good times weaknesses in my life. That's, I'm sure, that's what he said. God knows how to balance good times and bad times. I need to learn to lean on him. And I need to learn to trust him in every area. Listen to this. Job said it. The Lord gave blessings. The Lord has taken away hard times. Blessed be the name 
of the Lord. Tell the Lord today, whether you're in a hard time or a sweet time, I love you. You know what's best. Thy, I submit to thy perfect will, O Lord.